I still, I look at it now and I can't believe that I'm in that scene. Can you believe this weather, Frank? I'm Tony Provenzano and you have Jimmy Hoffa, obviously, and Frank and my, my, my cousin. And we've come for a meeting uh, because Hoffa needs my endorsement. To, to, to run again so he can he can get re-elected for the for the teamsters. People freezing to death in New York and look at us. Good job. Huh? Hey. Why we don't live here all year round is what I wanna know. Oh. Beautiful. It's summer. What? It's summer. People aren't freezing to death in New York. It's summer. In my mind it's always eight degrees in New York. I'm making a point. We're two egos that clash, do you know what I mean? We, we just shouldn't be in the same room together, basically. And in this particular meeting, it, it goes against everything that Jimmy stands for because he doesn't, you know, he's, like I've just said, he's a very stubborn man. And to make an apology for him, would he just doesn't do that. So he needs my endorsement to be able to run again in the elections. So this meeting's being called uh, for him to be able to ask me. Making a point. Making a point dressing like that? Is so that you dress for a meeting? And this is how you dress in Florida? In a suit? For a meeting? Anywhere. Florida, Timbuktu, I dress in a suit. For a meeting. I mean, the shirt's so loud, it's so brilliant. We found an original shirt. He's got a pair of Gucci loafers on, cream Gucci loafers, and he sprayed a bit of fake tan on me and all that. And he, you know, he's loving it while he's out there because he's from New York, so he's loving it in Florida. The shirt, she, it was an original pattern. I've, I've, still, I've still got one, actually, in my wardrobe at home. Never to be worn again, but it's for nostalgia, do you know what I mean? I never waited for anyone who was late more than 10 minutes in my life. I'd say 15, 15's right. No, 10. On the page, it's, um, it's very much, it's, it's a much more, it, it's very condensed, that particular scene. Um, and it's just dialogue between me and him. And, and Marty just, he kind of took me aside and he just went, just, he went to play with it a little bit more, just free it up. We did a couple of takes and that, and and Stephen popped into my head, my own my own voice popped into my head, and I was like, I'm in a scene with Robert De Niro. And he, he, he doesn't say nothing on the page. So my head went, oh, I can't have that, that's it's just. And then it was about, you know, being late, and, and that, and I just turned to him and I just went, what do you think, Frank? And it, to just watch him go, and then he comes up with that brilliant line of 12 and a half. Ten's not enough, you have to take traffic into account. That's, that's what I'm doing, I'm taking traffic into account. That's why it's 10. I still say 15. No, 10. Fine, we, we disagree on that. Well, oh. How about 12 and a half minutes? There we go, there 12 and a half. Middle, right it's in the middle, beautiful. And to just watch him pop into the scene then, and then we carried on and and that bit where I stand up and go to walk away, that, you know, that it wasn't scripted. I asked for your endorsement and you're giving me all this I asked for your apology. Who the fuck are you to apologize to? Jim. Who the fuck are you? Oh, Jim. Let's be gentlemen. Let's I don't just sit need down. this. Jimmy, Tony. Tony. Come on. Come on. I need this. I need you. Yeah, you need me. Talk, please. After we'd done one of the takes, I, I went, I went, is it all right that I got up to me? Still to these, because these are two legends, you know what I mean? They're two masters, they're the reason, part of the reason why I'm an actor today. I went, is it all right when I got up to walk away? I went back into Stephen, and they were like, no, no, it was great, it was, you know, it was fine, you know, it comes alive. And Marty creates this playground where you're, you know, you don't have to stick to everything that's on the script. You're allowed to play with it and create it and make it as real as possible. Me and Al just really started to improvise so it, it become like a real battle between these two egos. And then it goes into that scene as well, but this time he comes at me. Do you know what I mean? So, um, and then we just roll around on the floor. That's, it's, it's, it's handbags at dawn and it's meant to be slightly pathetic. <laughs> you out of your fucking mind. I'll apologize for being late. After I kidnap your granddaughter, rip her guts out and send them to you in a fucking attack. Oh, 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 no. <laughs> And we've had an altercation before when we met in prison. I was owed two million quid, which is a lot of money, do you know what I mean? Um, especially back then. You lost it. You forfeited it when you came in here. That's it. Do you know? So you always forfeited too? In the altercation we had, he, he said something derogatory, do you know what I mean, about Italians. So I've got the ump about that. You people, you people. What did you say? Oh my God. What did you say? Oh, come on, what I said. 
What the fuck did I say? I don't well, know. You what people, I said. you said you people. I'd already come up with an idea at home when I was reading through it with Anna. I had a little idea to do something. I didn't tell Marty and I didn't tell Al. I told the cameraman and I asked the props department how many bowls of ice cream did they have and they said loads. And then I knew it was going to be the last take of the wide, so I knew I had to get this in before, otherwise, you know what I mean? And it, it wouldn't work if it wasn't on the wide as well. So he's eating the ice cream really slowly, really. And, at the, and his last little bit, he took his last little mouthful and he puts his spoon down in the bowl and he just kind of leaned back. What, is, what, what does that fucking mean, you people? I'm done talking about this. You people? I'm done. As he did that, I just leaned across and I just lashed his ice cream bowl right across the room. And I went to jump across the table and I went, you, and he just went, whoa. You're done. I ripped your fucking head off. Marty went and cut and he went did you see that Marty the kid frightened me he frightened me so we had this little you know and then and we got on like a house on fire do you know what I mean I'd come across and then we'd stop and then the stuntman would come in hey! I think I really caught the fella once in the ribs accidentally completely another stuntman it's what they get paid for do you know what I mean hey, 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 get up. I'm fucking kill you. I'm that moment where I did smash his ice cream away, he really got frightened, you know what I mean, as the character. So that was that was fantastic. And we just kind of carried that into those little spats that we had, really. He'd just lean across and he'd, he'd touch my hand a couple of times. And he'd, just, he'd just give me this little nod and this little smile, which made me feel really comfortable. And, you know, it's that it's that little recognition of, well done, well done, well done. And he, he called me the kid, which was lovely, do you know what I mean?